What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today I was gonna talk to you about my favorite uh, bonsai that I have. Uh, and I was gonna tell you a little bit about how to care for it and uh, what you need in order to make it thrive and pretty much get yours to look exactly like mine. Well, maybe not exactly, uh, but get yours to thrive just like mine has. This is a beautiful plant. I mean, the ginkgo biloba uh, is really a piece of history. I mean, early fossil records indicate this plant has been around for anywhere from, I think, 270 million to about 375 million years ago. I mean, this plant is an old one, not this specific plant, but uh, this genus has been around for a long, long, long time. And it's done quite well. It is a deciduous tree. Um, it is found native to, I think, eastern China. Uh, so in the United States, it thrives anywhere from zones 3 up to zone 8. Uh, it doesn't do really, really well in extreme hot heat, hot, dry heat. Uh, in fact, uh, where this plant is planted further north, it usually does get to be a quite a bit taller than it usually does anywhere else. The plant has been able to adapt uh, with any kind of acidity and it likes kind of sandy soil, any kind of loamy soil, and it can even thrive in clay soil also. This plant has adapted well and uh, will really kind of take off in most conditions, although it does not like dry, intense, hot heat. And if you have any kind of other conditions, this tree will probably take off. Now you need to remember this is a uh, large tree. It can get anywhere from about 60 to 115 feet. Uh, and in some places in China, the plant can get up to 160 feet as well. Uh, so it can get rather large. A lot of people use it as a street tree. Uh, if you have a vast kind of wide open area, the ginkgo biloba would be a really good tree to put in that vast kind of open area. Uh, so don't forget, uh, they do get on the larger side. They are a shade tree, uh, but they can also be an ornamental tree as well. In the fall, these beautiful jade kind of green leaves turn a bright, beautiful, bold, brilliant kind of shaded yellow. I mean, it's a really pretty looking tree in the fall. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shade of yellow. So just be aware of that because it can be an ornamental piece as well. I just like to kind of look over my leaves and make sure that nothing really kind of sticks to them. Any kind of dead brown pieces you want to kind of go ahead and remove. That will help your tree. It will waste the valuable kind of nutrients that it can use anywhere else for the roots and the stem and the leaves. So any of these kind of dead spots, they will zap the tree with valuable nutrients. So anything that you see, just kind of, uh, you don't want there, just kind of pinch it off. If you don't have strong, hard nails, you can use pruning shears. Just make sure you sanitize them anytime you use them or you move it from plant to plant. Any kind of germs or illness can be kind of spread. So make sure you are paying attention to that. Now, as I was saying, these trees can get rather large, so if you're going to keep them as a bonsai, they'll be fine. You just got to prune them in the fall or in the spring, it really doesn't matter. I mean, every couple years, maybe about every three to five years, I'll take him out and I'll prune his roots too. You're not just looking to keep them small on the upper soil side, but you want to keep them short and small down below the soil as well. And that'll help them keep them uh, in a smaller size for them too. These small pots. I can do kind of a number on these plants, but if you're trimming the roots, you'll be fine. These plants do fine as a bonsai. And as you can see, I've got these guys over here. I've got about four that I've got in the forest form for bonsai over here. As you can tell, they're little saplings. I just got them uh, a couple months ago, so these are newer ones. Uh, this is one of my older bonsais, this guy right here. I've had him for a while. But the forest, a little three, four little bonsais, I've had them for a couple of months. Now these trees love full sun. So in the spring and summertime, for your bonsai, you want to keep them outside in a good sunny, direct location. I think these guys will receive about four to five, probably six hours of sunlight where I have them a day. So they do like a lot of water. They can be a little bit drought tolerant so you don't have to worry about it if it's been a while for rain. Although the leaves will tend to sag a little bit and look really limp and wilted if they don't have a lot of water. So I do water mine probably at least once or twice a week. In the summertime it's not unheard of to water them 
once a day. Now, I usually try to water them at night so that the water isn't sitting on here all beaded up and uh, kind of intensifying that heat and that direct sunlight on these leaves because you can kind of hurt them. So just be careful and kind of mindful of that. Either water them early, early in the morning or late at night after the sun is set. That will kind of help them out also. Feeding wise, I don't give these guys much except for kind of an all-purpose Fox Farm miracle Grow type fertilizer and I'll dilute that by half. Now you'll remember they are in soil so I do have mine in my own special kind of sandy soil for these guys but the kind of fertilizers that I use will feed them for a couple of months after having planted them. So just make sure that you're not feeding them on top of that also because that will burn them out and probably hurt them and do more harm rather than good. Now, with ginkgo biloba, these guys can take a while to recover from transplant shock, so be mindful of that. Uh, if you're placing them outside and you've just repotted them and you've uh, pruned them up a little bit, you want to place them somewhere that they're not going to have intense heat from the day a whole lot, uh, probably under the cover of your porch and give them maybe two to three hours of direct sunlight a day and slowly introduce them up to that full day sun intensity. So just make sure that you're looking for them and making sure that they're not going to be too scorched by the midday sun because that will hurt them. So keep that in mind also. As I was saying earlier, soil acidity can range from uh, highly acidic, which they don't like highly acidic, but they do like a lot of acidity. Moderate acidity would be more beneficial to them, but they can be a little bit alkaline too. So I uh, wouldn't go more than seven or eight as far as the alkalinity. So maybe like a 7.5 would probably be a little bit more ideal, but uh, the acidity can go a little bit higher with these guys also. Temperature wise, I would make sure that these guys aren't going to be getting a whole lot of direct sun during the hottest part of the day because like I said the heat, the dry heat will kind of kept them out and wear them out so be careful of that also. Uh, if the temperature goes up make sure that your water intake for these trees is going to go up also. Now these guys have been cultivated for a long time. I think they were rediscovered in China around the 1600s and since then we've known that there's been a lot of uh, health benefits with the leaves. I think they have ginkgo lights in them and that's thought to help uh, increase blood circulation and help uh, Alzheimer's patients as well. And there's a list of other ailments that these leaves and some of the nuts that the females produce are high in uh, nutritional value also. So uh, they don't just benefit from the leaves of the medicinal use, but they're good for food also. Strangely enough, these guys are listed as endangered uh, around the world. Now I know that uh, a lot of people have them in their yards because they're a beautiful tree. And in China, they'll also grow them as a hedge just to kind of use the leaves for medicinal purposes as well. But that's not enough to kind of keep the plant up. So be careful with your trees and make sure that you are taking good care of them because they are a little bit endangered. You want to keep that in mind also. They, as I was saying, they are tolerant down to zones three in the United States. Uh, so they can tolerate some cold, but not a whole bunch. And if you have this as a bonsai, in the summertime, I usually put mine in the garage to make sure that they are getting some cold weather, but not nothing that's gonna uh, kill the roots in these little pots that they're in. Cause you gotta think, they don't have a whole lot of insulation in here. I've heard of some people wrapping them up in burlap sacks around the pots uh, and kind of stuffing some mulch down in there. Some people will wrap them up in burlap saps and stick them down in the ground and bury them uh, for the winter time. But like I said, I keep mine in, in my garage right next to a bright window so it'll get adequate light. Now he will drop his leaves in the fall. Like I said, they'll turn a beautiful shade of yellow and then they'll lose their leaves. They are deciduous. Uh, so they'll be back again next spring, but uh, they are beautiful leaves to see in the fall also. And I think I was talking about pruning earlier. You want to prune these guys in the spring. Uh, around this time in June and in the summertime, it's probably a little too late. Although you can pinch occasional leaves off if they look like they're dead or dying, and that'll keep them healthy as well. These trees really are great trees to have because they are virtually pest free. A lot of Pests do not like the taste of ginkgo biloba or the smell or it's something about it, but they are pest free virtually. Now they will have their problems with slugs, will probably get on there and try and eat. Spider mites 
can run rampant if they become infected with a plant, so be uh, mindful of that. And what you can do with spider mites, actually one of these smaller ones earlier this summer had a little spat with the spider mites that looked like all I did was take the garden hose and spray it off really well and uh, it'll knock most of them off. And anything that's left on that you can take a uh, washcloth pour some alcohol on there and kind of go over the stems and the uh, trunks and the leaves and kind of wipe them down a little bit and that'll kill anything else left that's left over. And now if you find that you have a really bad problem with it, say something this size was, was covered in spider mites, you might have to get a little bit of uh, some chemical fungicide and pesticide. I would go with neem oil first because that's more organic than anything else. Uh, it's not high in chemicals or whatever. So I would go with neem oil, but be careful. That's a little bit of that stuff goes a long way and it smells. So uh, be cautious of that. And then I would just apply it conservatively. You don't want to put a whole lot on there. Uh, like I said, a little bit goes a long way. But if you do see any kind of pest on there, first of all, I would just try to spray it off with the garden hose. That's how Mother Nature does it. A rain comes along and it will knock the pest off and uh, most trees will be fine that way. But you will have occasional problems where pests just kind of set in and then you'll probably just have to get the fungicide or the neem oil out for that. Now with water, uh, these guys do like their water so make sure that you are kind of paying attention to that. But they can be a little bit drought tolerant. Uh, they're not fully drought tolerant but they can go without some water for a little bit of time. So just be mindful of that and you'll see the leaves will start to droop and it won't look as perky as it usually always does. So if that happens, just kind of help them out and give them a little bit of water, uh, especially in the spring and summertime when it gets really hot. Around the end of August, early September, I will be moving these guys into the garage, and I'll probably do a little video on that just to show you what I do to kind of take care of these guys for the wintertime to ensure that they're gonna make it through the wintertime also, I know some of you say that your bonsais are fine, and then they'll lose their leaves, and then they never grow again. They never uh, develop any more leaves, and that's just because they've died through the winter time. And I can show you different ways that will help you to prevent that. Now, it's not going to probably help all of your plants, but I can get um, a majority of your plants at least through the harsh winter times that I've seen around here in Kentucky. Other than that, that's really all I've got to say about ginkgo biloba. Interesting enough, this is the only plant in this family, ginkgo cacia. So this plant is a piece of history. Everything else that was associated with that family has already been extinct for quite some time. So this is the only plant left in this family. And you can identify it by its beautiful fan-shaped leaves. And you can tell this guy's got a split in his leaves here. But this one over here is more of a fuller kind of fan shape that you see there. And also, in England, uh, I think they call it the maidenhair tree. Uh, and that's just because the leaves kind of do resemble the maidenhair fern. Uh, so that's where they got that common name, uh, Maidenhair Tree, from. Uh, well guys, that's really all I wanted to say on the care of ginkgo biloba trees. Uh, you really do need to get you one if you don't have it in the form of a bonsai. I would say this is more of the beginner to intermediate bonsai. If you've had several, you should be okay with this. And again, uh, I do have other bonsais, so in the coming weeks, I will be making new videos to show you my various bonsais and what all I have and what all I have to do in order to keep them alive and thriving as well. Like I said guys, uh, if you got any questions or comments, be sure to leave me one and uh, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys have a good one, take it easy, and always plant prudently. Thank you YouTube.